Podcast.f1. Hey you guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, it's your boy D Combs, and I'm finally back with another video. Based on the title, you guys already know what this video is going to be about. We're doing a Q&A slash mukbang. I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me whatever questions you wanted. If you haven't followed me already on Instagram, make sure you click that follow button. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you click that subscribe button as well. So without further ado... Let's just jump right into it. So for the month, man, I got myself some Chick-fil-A. If you guys don't eat Chick-fil-A, what are you really doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you really doing right now? As you guys can see, I got a large lemonade. Is my name out there? Oh, no, babe. We got to cover this. <laughs> As you guys can see, I got a large lemonade. And then for my main meal, I got to order a large fries. A order of four-piece tenders. And I got myself a spicy deluxe with pepper jack cheese. If you get a spicy deluxe with American cheese or a regular chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A, please don't talk to me, okay? For real. And I, and I mean that, too. For sauces, I just have Chick-fil-A sauce, and I also have the garlic herb ranch. If you guys haven't tried this um, sauce yet, make sure you try it because this tastes so good with the tenders. Mm. Chef's kiss, let me tell you. And then of course, I got some ketchup, so yeah. Now before I even jump into the questions, you guys asked me some real spicy questions and there was no filter, but boy oh boy, did you guys ask me some questions. <laughs> like I said, without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So I got the questions on my phone, I took screenshots because I had two rounds of questions and there was so many questions that I had to screenshot them. One of the questions was, what was your first worst date? Give us some details. Don't be shy. Man, let me tell you something. Um, truth be told, and I'm not going to say no names. That's a disclaimer. So I'm going to use nicknames. I'm not using real names. So just in case you guys want to be mixy, don't be mixy. Because I'm not trying to be mixy. You guys ask, I'm answering. Okay, that's the deal. Um, little sidebar, I don't like tomatoes in my um, Chick-fil-A sandwich. Ew. That's nasty. My first worst date was... Before we get into that question, let me take a good bite of my sandwich, cuz... Mm. When you guys hear this story, you're gonna be like, what? Right. Anyways, my first worst date was... Mm, this was back in September of last year. On September 11th. Oh, baby, this is spicy. <coughs> Oh, they like volleyed in this sandwich. And I basically met this person. Where did I meet him at? I think I met this person on TikTok. And then it went to like Instagram and stuff like that. But before I even got to the first date, there was like hella red flags before the first date. That's just gonna put it out there. And me being dumb, I felt as if that, you know, just ignore them. You know how we are. Some people are like that, like we just ignore the red flags and just keep it pushing and stuff like that. Oh, I should say the young man. I should give the young man a chance, even with the red flags, you know what I'm saying? So, basically, he wanted to see me, he wanted to see me, and I was like, like dubbing it. Like, I was postponing it because I didn't want to see him. Like, I didn't, and I felt like I wanted a haircut. And I didn't even have a haircut at the time, but since he was like constantly writing me to see me, I was like, you know what, F it, like... He gonna see me at my work. She see me on Instagram, so he know how I look on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I really look. But anyway, our first date wasn't even planned. Like he was like feeling to see me, but didn't even have an agenda. Like didn't even want, like didn't even know what to do. Anyways, I get in the car and we on our way to the date. He gonna ask me in the car. He said. Oh, how do you feel about being in public? And I'm like, what you mean? He's like, how do you feel like with me out in public? And I'm like, I don't really care. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you really saying right now? So, we still driving. He's like, all right, cool. We driving. His phone rings. It's on the dashboard. Now, you know CarPlay be setting people up. If you know, you know. And the name popped up on CarPlay. You know, me being nosy, I took a... Side eye, like looking at that dashboard, like who's that, right? 
but it's in my head though. If you guys catch me looking at this direction, my monitor is right here, so don't mind me. We get to the date. Tell me why this man took me to a lounge. To a lounge. Like, I'm talking about a lounge where there is music, people like fiesta, hookah, and food. Like, and it was on it was on a Sunday, so it was like Super Bowl Sunday. I kid you not, I really wanted to leave. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys, I really wanted to leave, but like me being understanding, I just wanted to, you know, give it a try, you know what I'm saying? We based our order, and like, the food came, we was like drinking, and I like, smoked hookah. This man did not speak to me, like, at all. When I say, at all, I mean at all, right? That man literally stood quiet, he was looking at me, Staring at me like, but didn't say a word. Like it was so awkward to the point where it's like, why am I even here? Like you know what I'm saying? Like why am I here sitting down here? Like why am I even attending this? You know what I'm saying? I felt like very out of place because I'm not used to that. I'm used to like people that I go on dates with to talk, converse, and I I'm not used to no Super Bowl Sunday lounge date. Like what type of date is this? Like I'm not gonna lower my standards that low now. Come on now. But anyways. That happens, the food comes out, there was like small talk, give or take, small talk. And when I mean small talk, I'm talking about like small talk. So we eating, we chilling, X, Y, and Z, right? So now the night is over. The night is over, and now he like, oh, have you ever been to IPIC? And I'm like, yeah, I've been to IPIC before, like, whatever case it be. Again, the red flag from the jump should have been like the worst day ever, right? But since the, since the red flag was from before the day, the date happened, I cannot leave now. Like, so we ended up going watching a movie. We go to IPIC, X, Y, Z. Now we're driving to IPIC and we're early to the movie. The movie started like late at night, but we was like maybe like 45 minutes um, early. So we, at this point, we in the car. Now he's like, you know, sort of talking to me, like sort of, like not too much, but like talking enough to have a conversation. And he starts asking me questions about, like, my past or, like, that he could tell that I've been through a lot. Blase, blase, blase. Now, I don't know if this man was trying to guilt trip me, but he sure did. So now, it's time to go to the movies, watch a movie. The movie was trash. Okay, cool. So now, the movie is over. Now, it's like 12 o'clock at night. Like, 12 a.m., I swear to God. He looks me dead in my face. He goes, like, so what you want to do? So I'm like, what do you mean what I want to do? Like, what kind of question is that? So I'm like, oh, I don't know, it's up to you, whatever. He was like, I mean, do you want to go home? I said, I mean, if you're going to go out, we go out again, I don't really care. Like, at that point, I'm like, it's late already. Like, we go out somewhere else. You took me to a lounge at the start of this date. So what can be worse than that? You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, if we go out, lo and behold, that man was on his phone, I'm assuming, because I couldn't see you. Looking for hotels. Lo and behold, he gets on the phone with somebody, right? So, he calls and he asks, like, oh, are you guys open for, like, rooms? I'm looking at my, in my head. I'm like, what is he talking about, right? So, he wanted confirmation that they could be able to get, a, well, he could get a room at, at that time. Now, in my head, automatically, I said it, like, I'm not fucking. In my head, I'm like, if this nigga think he'd be fucking, we not fucking. Like, so we get to the hotel, he pays it, right? And I'm like, he don't even ask how much is it, right? So I'm like, oh, he's like big baller, shot caller. He don't even look at the receipt at the restaurant. He's ordering whatever the fuck he want to order. I'm like, oh, he must be big baller, shot caller. Red flag right there. That was like, you trying so hard. We get to the hotel room. Now, it's mad awkward. Because, like, one, in my head, I'm not fucking. Two... I'm like thrown off. I think we're going out to uh, like not somewhere else. He's talking about the hotel. You could have just said that, nigga. Like I would have been like, uh, no. Now it's time. Like we like the TV is on. We watch the TV X, Y, Z, and we like chilling. Like we're not even like doing nothing, like at all. We're not doing anything at all. It's to the point that it's like crickets in this. It's like crickets in the room for real. So I just made a conversation. I, I started a conversation. I was like, "Oh, what's wrong with you? Like, you okay? Like, I make you nervous or something? Cause like you could talk. You know, the cat don't have to have your tongue." I made a joke, right? <laughs> Anyways, long story short, moments later, we started kissing. 
right? We start kissing. We start kissing. Just kissing. Just straight kissing, right? Like, I kid you not. That was going on for a little while, right? Like, just talking, kissing, talking, kissing. Like, nothing more. I swear to God. I swear to God, right? Now, at this point, I'm laying down on the headboard of the bed, right? And, like, he, uh, he's laying on me. Oh, I think I'm laying on him. Like, he's told me to lay on him. I don't know which, which, which direction. All I can tell you is this. We was about to order some food, right? So, he's on his phone trying to figure out what to order, what's open around that hotel, which was, like, it was, like, 2 and 3 in the morning. I don't know how. It was late, though. I ain't gonna lie. Why the fuck I'm laying down or, like, whatever it gets to be, I can see the phone. And the phone is like in front of in front of him, right? He's like looking through it, looking through it, whatever, whatever, right? Why, you know, when you like swipe on the iPhone, you swipe down on the main menu and it shows you the most recent apps you use sometimes? Why the hell I saw a dating app? Boy, come on, like, if this is what you, like, if that's what you, and no, nothing against the dating apps. I'm not, I'm not against it. However, like, I'm not going for no nigga like that. Like, I don't want to date nobody that's on a dating app, and I'm not messing with nobody, and I didn't meet you on a dating app. I met you on TikTok. I didn't meet you on a dating app. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you could have kept on the low low. Like, you could have you could have deleted that app for a little while. You know what I'm saying? Or hide that hoe. I don't know. But, like, when I saw that, like, instantly my red flag, the red flags came back up, and I was like, yeah, mm-mm, it's done deal. Mind you... It is like four in the morning. At this point, my food is cold. Like, damn. It's four in the morning, and I'm like, where the fuck am I going? <laughs> where am I going? I can't go nowhere. Like, mind you, we came in his car. I, my car was parked by my house, and I just felt like if I would have left at four in the morning, my mom would have asked me like mad questions and shit like that, like suspicious. So, I felt like I couldn't leave. Now, this is the thing. This is the catch. Since it was 4 in the morning, I just felt like, one, it's too late to be leaving the hotel. Two, coming home at that time, it just, it just doesn't look right. I felt like, you know what, it is what it is. So, like, I think he, like, read, like, he saw the, my facial expression and he probably knew what it was about. He was like, oh, what happened with you? And I told him the truth. But I said, I'm not really interested in that. I don't know what type of timing you want, blah, blah, blah. And he was like... Like, he cried and everything. Like, like, niggas is a narcissistic. Like, they're there. Yo, niggas be doing anything to keep a nigga. Like, come on, mo. Like, don't, don't feed me that. You know what I'm saying? Like, he like Chelo Tia. You know how niggas are. Niggas be doing anything. For real. Just to keep somebody. He was telling me, like, oh, he would delete all those apps. He's not really interested. Like, he found the one when he saw me come out, like, come out the car, like, my car. He was like, that, you were the one. And X1 out of Z. Let me tell you something. Why that man? We had went out to get McDonald's because McDonald's was open. Tell me why. Tell me why that man literally went downstairs when we went to McDonald's. At right, 4 in the morning, after having a conversation, he go to the front desk and try to show off again. He was like, I want to send the rooms tomorrow. I'm like, I look at that nigga like, what? Like, said, what room to tomorrow? Who said I want to say it's tomorrow? Like, it happened, like, in five seconds. I kid you not. Didn't run anything by me. Didn't ask him, don't want to stay tomorrow. Nothing. Like, he just thought, like, in his mind, he'll come tomorrow. I'm like, what? That happened. Now, it's time to go get McDonald's. So, we get McDonald's, we come back. Now, it's more, like, chill vibes, I guess. Like, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. Now, the next morning, why I wake up next morning... We waking up, right? Both of us. And it's time to check out. So it's time to check out. The sun is out, beaming in the hotel room. I see this mark on his neck, like a little mark. It wasn't like visible, but it was visible enough to me to see it. Like, what is that? So I'm like, oh, what is that? That's like, a, that's a hickey? He like, nah. It didn't look like a hickey though. It looked like a hickey that was going away though. That's what it was. He like, now it's not a hickey. Like, what? We talking about I have a mark right here? He goes in the mirror. He like, I got a mark right here? Like, I'm like, yeah, you got a mark right there. <sighs> Let me tell you, that night that he came back to the hotel, I saw the mark still there. So this is like a one day, a two day, one day. Like, this is the first day, but in two days. So now that day, he acting like funny, like funny style, whatever. 
And now, I'm like, that morning we went and got breakfast and everything, and I still saw that mark in the neck. And I'm like, yo, like, I thought that the mark would go away. By that time, I thought you'd probably scratch yourself. That mark was still there. So in the nighttime, when it was time to come back to the hotel, that mark was still there. So I'm asking on, again, I'm like, yo, that's a hickey on your neck? Like, like you cannot tell me that's anything else because it's been, like, about... 12 to 18 hours passed and why that mark is still on your neck like you know what I'm saying Lord that nigga was a liar that shouldn't even last that long between him and I because that nigga was a narcissistic pathological liar and it that was just the worst of the worst first day I've ever experienced in my entire life and I'm 24 years old and that had to be the worst one of them all so for my next question somebody asked me how many body counts do you have First of all, why y'all being so nosy for? Y'all that's so like sneaky. What's wrong with y'all? Like what? How many body counts I have? I'm not <laughs> Well I'm not telling y'all. That's for me to know. Okay? But no. My body count is not that high, but it's not that low. But no, I'm not saying no numbers. But if this helps, I was in a I was in two long relationships for three years each relationship. And in between there was, you know, people around but yeah, so that answers your question. Yeah. Somebody asked me, I always want to know why you asked me that one question. <laughs> Alright, so if that person is watching this right here, basically I was dealing with somebody and they had accused me of flirting with you or you flirting with me and they kind of like, was being very like mixy or trying to get like details without getting details and it was like oh you and that nigga are talking i saw him comment on your picture because like you had commented on my picture and he was like oh yeah i, I got fucking around with each other like i'm not even friends blah blah one day i was like you know what f it like i'm gonna ask him myself because I don't have to hide anything like you know it's nothing more than a friendship you had told me that you had somebody I had somebody in that time too, so it was like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, whatever. So when that person, I'm going to give him the name Bob. Bob asked me that question, I was thrown off because in our DMs, it was nothing but friends. So I was confused, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, what? But that's why I asked you that question that day. I apologize because you probably was like, thrown off, like, what? But yeah, that's why I asked you that question. <laughs> You guys love asking this question. Some of these questions are like repetitive. Somebody don't ask me, why are you hiding a nigga? What's T? Ain't nobody hiding no nigga. Like, y'all are so nosy. That's the problem. Like, see, I had a conversation before with my friends, family, and nigga I'm talking to. Right? There's a fine line between hiding a nigga and keeping it a secret. And being private. I am very private. I'm not hiding the nigga. Like, y'all trying to be so nosy. That's the problem. People know on my Instagram that I have, that I am in a relationship. Or like I post small stuff on Instagram. But you guys will never catch my man face on my Instagram story. Like, because if you people like y'all, that's why I don't post something. Because y'all be so nosy. Like, let a boy rock a little bit. Like, come on. <laughs> But no, I'm not hiding my nigga. I'm not like, that's none of that. Like, you know what I'm saying? I, when I go out, I post. And we have had a conversation about that before. Like, him and I about, like, posting each other or X, Y, and Z. And it's not a secret, like I said. It's just more so privacy. Like, maybe eventually I would. But, like, right now, no. And that's only because, in reality, people be so nosy. And I feel like if I was to post my man, like, publicly... There'd be, like, very malicious people out there on the internet and social media and general like that that would, like, try to look for my man or, like, like, would probably, like, I don't know, like, look for him look for him or, like, DM him something or try to be, like, mixy to a point trying to make up a story and, like, it's just, I don't have time for that, you know what I'm saying? Because if anything, the truth that my nigga needs to know is from me. Like, I don't have to sugarcoat nothing, like, about my past or anything. So, you would hear it from me first. But there be people out there so malicious because that has happened to me before where people start making up random stories. And then it causes a division in your relationship if you allow it. But sometimes when a relationship is just starting, 
it can cause a very large division and it, it could cause like trust issues and I don't want to do that, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I'm not hiding the nigga, I'm just not posting him. If that answers your question. The next question is, some of you guys are look really cute here and some of them are not even questions, some of them are like compliments. But somebody said, I miss you, do you miss me? I want you to be the god daddy to my babies. Now, this person, like, her and I have been friends with co-workers back in my old job. And, wait, hold on. Yes, I miss you too, girl, I do. But can I be, can I be a god daddy to your babies? I don't know about that. Because, like, you, one, I want to have kids myself. Two, I don't think I'm ready to be a godfather. And you said babies. You said, like, you have more than one. I do not have one. Maybe one day you and I could, like, meet up, talk, have have a drink or two, and, like, catch up. And then, you know, maybe I'll think about it. Because, I, like I said, I do want kids myself. So, you know, we could figure something out. You know what I'm saying? You got it. The next question is, when are you coming back on YouTube? We miss you. Well, I miss you too. But, I took a while from YouTube. The last video I posted was, like, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was in August. But during that time, I was going through some tough stuff, like personal, personal stuff, and like a past relationship that kind of like took a toll on me. And I took a, like a long break from YouTube, and I was like not really focusing on YouTube. I was kind of like discouraged on YouTube. I'm not gonna lie to you. Sometimes numbers become discouraging when you put your all on YouTube. And then the numbers don't match up. And it's like, you could be so dedicated. And then the numbers don't match up. The views don't match up. The likes don't like match up. You know what I'm saying? So, I during that time, I became very discouraged while dealing with personal stuff. That's, that's why I took a long break from YouTube. And then, recently, I've been talking about YouTube for a while. Because I have, like, great things coming up. I'm in a whole different headspace. I'm just, you know, you know, just everything is different. Oh, I felt like right now is my... Prime time, my prime era, like, I can get back on YouTube, I have great ideas for content purposes, and besides great content, I also have a trip coming up in September, so, I want to get back on YouTube now, so I can, you know, have you guys up there, and, you know, post some great content, but I damn miss you too, I'm gonna love you, for real, for real, I miss you. So for the next question, somebody asked me, where do you see yourself in the next few years? And sometimes, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I feel like that's a great question. Um, if you were asking that maybe a month ago or two, maybe like five months ago, I wouldn't have an answer for you. But, since I'm in a different headspace right now, I feel like I can answer that question. Well, right now, I'm 24, a few years is more than two, so like three or four years. So, in a few years, where do I see myself? I honestly, I really, really, truly want to <clears throat> invest in myself more and like, and I mean like self-care, like going to the gym, my health, my mental health, like I want to invest in myself in that area, not so materialistic wise, because materialistic things are just like temporary, you know what I'm saying? I want to actually invest in myself, you know, better myself and better myself for my family or for my partner or in general, um, because I feel like that's what we needed. Where do I see myself in the next few years as far as career or in general? I feel like in a few years, I do want to have some kids. I do. I feel like some kids is necessary. Honestly, before I was even 21, I was 21. If you know, you know. So, I kind of feel like I already had, I already enjoyed my 20s. And I feel like, at least before I turn 30, I want to have some kids. And I'm talking about like three or four kids. Having a business, whichever direction it goes in, whether it's for YouTube, my hair business, like wi making wigs and stuff like that. But having, owning a business, multiple businesses, like to have multiple incomes coming in. And I just see myself more at peace. And I feel like that's when I feel like I'll be my best self. So yeah. So for the next question, somebody said, bitch, give us a good, 
bitch, give us a good college story because we all know how them buff days were. Well, if you don't know, now you know I graduated from Buffalo State College. I got my bachelor's degree in fashion designing. Fashion and textile designing, to be exact. But yeah, shout out to the Buffalo State alumni if you guys are watching. But to give y'all a good college story, let me tell you something. I can't even give you guys one story. So I'm just going to summarize it like this. In my freshman year, well, throughout my years in college, besides the pandemic, the pandemic like ruined everything. Like for real, for like, and the pandemic came around my junior year. So after, I, I, freshman and sophomore year was like the goal fun years. Junior year and senior year was terrible. I didn't have a graduation because it was COVID. But anyways, to give you a good college, college story, I feel like I had the time of my life. In college, my freshman year, my sophomore year, I, it was a blast. I had met some great people. Um, it's like, I can't even tell you one story because we'd be here all day long, like, because there's so many good stories. But just know, there was times that, like, I fell out with people or I gained great relationships. I was always partying. I, Lord, I don't even know. I, I honestly speaking, I, and every weekend I look forward to the weekend because I was always in a party. Like it, it was, I did not sleep in the weekends. Like it was like party, sleep, party, sleep, and I sometimes didn't even sleep in my room. I was sleeping in my friend's room. Like I would crash because I didn't want to walk to my dorm room, so I would stay in their crib. Like, <sighs> yeah. If you know, you know. Like dumb buff state parties was, uh, it was epic for Rage Boys. Like, I'm not, you know, you know, like, man, I don't get details, but you know, dumb college parties with Buff State, or we had, like, UB versus Buff State, or, like, Buffalo State meet Albany. Just know, it was lit. Somebody asked me, how old would you date? Um, well, I'm 24. If I was single and dating, the oldest I will date will have to be... No more, like, it, you gotta be in, like, your late 20s, like, 28, 29. But, like, if you reach in 30, that's, like, the breaking point. That's the old I would date then, 30. If that. Because give or take, I don't want no old men. Like, like, no more than 30. So, yeah. The next question was, somebody gonna ask me, am I a certified low boy or future? Y'all play all day. Like, y'all trying to play me. First of all... I'm a certified level boy, but I also got future in me too, alright? So don't fucking fail me. You get it? I could be a level boy, but I could also be future too. The next question was, <clears throat> hold on, let me take a little break and take a little sip of my drink, because your boy, my, my, clench my thirst. Anyways, so the next question somebody asked me was, what do you use to edit your TikToks? Shit is too fire. Um, well, thank you for giving that compliment. What I use to edit my TikToks is very basic. I use CapCut for all my TikToks. Every single one. <clears throat> There's only maybe like a few there that are like made or like I just use like TikTok to just make my um video for me but like most of them majority of them are on CapCut. Somebody asked me um who is my favorite music artist? Honestly, I don't have one, like just one, but for the female, I do male and female. For males, my um favorite music artist will have to be like Future, Drake, Little Baby, Little Dirk. Little TJ. Who else? Meek Mill. I just thought it. Like, I have more, but like, I, not on my top of my head. But female artists, it's not that many. It's like my go to female artists. No matter what the situation is, no matter what beef they may have, I don't care. I listen to all of them. Because I give respect to all of them. So I feel like my favorite. Female artists are like Nicki Minaj, um, Cardi B, Mulatto, Kehlani, um, SZA, Summer Walker, who else? I don't know. 
And that's about it. And I got more, but you know, top of my dome head. Those are my favorite music artists. Um, man, y'all, y'all are something else. Let me tell you. The next question that somebody asked me was, "What is your most craziest sex story?" First of all, this ain't that, and that ain't this. Okay, so we're not gonna tell no story. Okay, look, I have my fair share, so I can't even pick one crazy story because I had like a few crazy stories. But I feel like a crazy sex story. Oh, I'll say one. I'm gonna say that. And I didn't even, I wasn't even into it. That's what, that's how I can talk about it, honestly. So, it's not more so crazy in a good way, but, no story short, I think that this one was more so like a dumb ass move. It was like my birthday, and I had gotten like super, super drunk. Like, super drunk. And like, people were there, you know, you know. Like, people who know, like, they were there, they know, I don't know. Things were going on, and I kid you not, when I tell you guys I was falling asleep, well, while like fucking, I was falling asleep. That's how drunk I was. Like, I wasn't even like stable to even be having that. So, if that answers your question, then yeah. But I have like crazier sex stories, but I don't want to give you no details. You just, this, no. TMI. Like, come on. Somebody asked me, I'm not even gonna say the name. And there is no issue with this person, but I would like for you guys to stop asking me that question. And I would gladly, really appreciate if you guys would kind of put two and two together before asking me some type of question like that. Somebody asked me, are you and blank still together? No, we're not still together. Please stop asking that question. Him and I have no beef with each other, but no, we're not together. I am truly happy for him in the direction that he went. I'm happy about myself the direction that I went. And with that's just that. Like I would like for you to stop asking me that question. Like, but there's no beef, there's no nothing, but no to answer the question, we're not together. <laughs> Some of y'all are mixy. Somebody gonna ask somebody asked me, tell the people why you wouldn't fuck with a nigga that has an OnlyFans or Twitter. Y'all joking, right? Like, I really hope y'all joking. First of all, and nothing against the OnlyFans and the Twitter people, but I have spoken about it. And the person who asked me this question, like, her and I spoke about this before, so she's trying to be funny. But I'll answer it for you guys. I truly will never, when I say never, I mean never, will ever mess with somebody with an OnlyFans or with a Twitter. No, like I'm not into that. That's not my cup of tea. There should be no reason why I am talking to somebody with their OnlyFans or Twitter. I would only talk to a nigga with Twitter or uh, OnlyFans if I was into that too, like making content as well. I do not. I don't make content. I am not against it, but I don't do shit like that. So I would not date them. I just feel like that's not my cup of tea, and that's just that. Like no offense. Mm -mm. I am not interested in that. Like, you can't be fucking with me and posting content. Not everybody see your goods. Mm -mm. I'm good, love. You can get the fuck out of here with that. Uh uh. Oh. Um. This is a good one. Somebody asked me, What's the biggest misconception you think people have about you? I have heard it before. The biggest one. Is that when people see me on social media, they think I'm a bitch. Like, they think I'm a stuck-up, cocky nigga. Like, and I'm not. Even though it may look like that because of the materialistic things and all that stuff. Behind all that stuff, I am a goofy person. I'm very loving. I'm very caring. And I feel like that misconception could maybe ruin a friendship or a potential friendship. But trust me, that is not the case. Like... Like, if all my friends know me, like, I be having them weak. Like, I be having them cracking up, like, for real, for real. So, that's my, has to be the biggest misconception. Mm. People have about me. The next question somebody asked me was, were you always gay? Um, 
to answer the question, well, if you don't know, I am gay. Well, I think you know that by now, right? I'm assuming, because I said my man. And the story time I said worst date was a man. Anyways. Um, <laughs> um, to answer the question, no. I was not always gay. Um, at one point in time, I was straight. Like, I was messing with females and stuff like that. I came out to my mom, like, my, my, my mom only, when I was 14, going on 15, as, like, being bisexual. Because I was still messing with females, but I still had a thing for males. Like, I was messing around with males as well at that time. But I tried to, like, save my ass and say, like, I was bisexual so it won't be, you know, that bad as saying a 14-year-old saying, oh, um, I'm gay. You know what I'm saying? So... I still find women attractive, but I won't date one, you know, but I was not always gay. I actually had, my mom was surprised that I was gay when I told her because I was always dating females and I was always messing around with another female like every now and then. Like, it was like ridiculous at this point. I feel like if I was, if I was straight, I feel like I would have about like two kids by this point. Like seriously, like I'm so serious. Somebody, <laughs> y'all stupid. If you're not following Instagram, then what are you really doing? But the other day, there was a meme that said, Oh, sex starts at 11, what time should it end? So somebody gonna write me a question and said, If sex starts at 11, what time should it end, D? Via meme. Like, it was on Instagram. <laughs> to answer that question, like, for real, for real, like, all jokes aside, I feel like if sex starts at 11... I feel like if we count, um, what's that called? Roleplay? From start to finish? I think, give or take, it should be like an hour, hour and a half. Oh, is that too much? A good, like, 20 minutes to start, you know, like, kissing, all that stuff. And then, like, the actual get down with the get down could be about, like, I don't know. I feel like, maybe like another 30 minutes. So like, give or take an hour, hour and a half, I don't know. Y'all get the point. I said an hour, hour and a half. Simple. Y'all drop a comment down below and tell me what time it should end, if that's the case. If sex starts at 11, what time it should end, y'all? Y'all tell me in the comments then. For real. Oh, so this is a comment. Um, somebody said, um, where are you traveling to next because the vlogs be lit. Well, thank you, my love. I really appreciate it. Um... And your vlogs and your videos, because um, she also has YouTube too. Um, I could probably like plug her YouTube in if I know how to do it. If I don't know how to do it, I apologize. But I could definitely put her YouTube up here or like in the description bar down below. But her YouTube videos be lit too and her TikTok content be fire. So, but where I'm traveling to next, um, I will tell you guys. But since I'm traveling there with my boyfriend for his birthday, I'm not going to put it out like that but I am having a trip coming up very, very soon it's in September he's a Libra um so the trip should be it's coming soon okay and we finna get lit for real for real like when I tell you this is an interesting question first of all I had spoke about this before with somebody else but I'm glad somebody asked me this question this question says what are your thoughts on birthday dinner invitations and showing up empty-handed let me tell y'all something really quick because I feel like there's like this misconception going around that if somebody invites you to their birthday, they should pay the whole bill, the whole tab, and they should be grateful that you just come. No. I don't know what household you came from, but in my household that I was growing up in, my mom always told me, don't ever come to no place empty-handed. That looks so wrong. I don't know what's wrong with the generation where people feel as if they could come to a party empty-handed and not even give a gift. Just show up. How can you just show up empty-handed? And it's so crazy to me how they will be the people with like the most designer stuff or X, Y, and Z and can't even buy the person flowers. Like, something small. Like, you know, depends on the friend group. You know what I'm saying? Because... You know, we all have that friend group where it's like we have those bougie friends, those chill friends, those friends that just, they don't really give a fuck about their birthday, they want to have a good time friends. We have those friends that want to travel, like, that's different, you know what I'm saying? Then that's different. But if it's a birthday dinner and it's like this big hurrah with like decorations and like this venue and I'm not showing up empty handed. So, I don't understand how people, male or female, 
People be having like birthday dinners, it be like dirty deep. 30 people deep in the table and the birthday person only received like five to six gifts. If that. How is it 30 people here feasting on a meal that is paid for and you guys can't even come with a gift? And like the gift could be anything from a dollar to whatever the limit is. Like don't feed me no nonsense. There's so much affordable things you get people like that are luxury or not luxury. You get somebody perfume, a cologne. There are luxury candles if they're into, if they're into that, like Diptyque or or um, Tom Ford. There's affordable things that you can get for somebody's birthday to have like the thought that counts. You know what I'm saying? Oh, the person said we need some we need some fashion content too. You know what's so crazy? I actually want to get into that also on YouTube and on TikTok. I just, I just, I don't know. Like, I feel like my sense of style is nice. If you follow me on Instagram, then you know. But if I knew what I knew now before, I think I would have been did that. You know, I would have been did more content. But that content soon come because I want to get into that more often. Because that is my major one. Um, I like putting stuff together anyway. So stay tuned to that. If you're not following me on TikTok, make sure you guys follow me on TikTok too. I will drop the TikTok down around here or in the description bar down below but yeah not my food getting cold like oh my god this is so nasty i don't even want this food no more honestly truly it's not even a mukbang no more this one's a juicy one somebody asked me have you have you had friends support other friends more than you okay hold on let me put it like this i've had plenty of friends right support me and repost things and you know genuinely be there for me mentally and physically and emotionally you know give me advice give me tips stuff like that but i have had a fair share of some of my friends having their moments where they will support somebody else more than me and that's okay to a certain extent as long as you support me uh, like the slightest bit i'm okay with that but don't just don't support at all, you know? Like, support me from the beginning to the end. Don't just support me when there's the end, when it's like I'm already up, you know? Like, making money and stuff like that. Like, support me through the trenches. Support me where I, like, if I was looking for Chick-fil-A, like, I'm cutting potatoes. Like, and I'm trying to find potatoes. Like, don't support me when I have the franchise Chick-fil-A. Like, support me when I'm trying to build the franchise. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't support me when it's beneficial to you and not support me when it's not beneficial to you you get what i'm saying so have i had that before yes i have i feel like for multiple reasons but that's okay but if you have friends that like don't support you at all or like just be there for you when the right time or when you know when you have that up moment then that's not really your friend that's how i see it Cause i feel like any friend should support you with anything from start to finish that's how i see it personally Next question is, how long does it take for you to say I love you to a nigga? Honestly, um, I don't know. I really don't know. I think it depends on situation and depends on how the relationship is going. And it also depends on like the connection, the intimacy, how we are together in one space and one confined space like it just can't be i can't i'm not gonna say i love you to a person out of the blue like you know what i'm saying i had to actually feel that like mentally and physically like and emotionally too so i'm not about to be out here saying i love you to anybody now but i personally feel as if that it would take me a minute you know when the time is right just like when you meet somebody's parent or when you meet their friends when the time is right you know, there's no, like, time limit. Like, oh, in three months, say I love you. Like, in eight months, you meet the parent. Like, in eight years, you meet their grandparents. Like, no. Like, when the time is right, things will fall together. Fall in place. Somebody asked me, how do you determine if a nigga is DL? First of all, my gay radar is very, like, I can sense that shit from a mile away. I'm not even a lot of you. But... To the term of a nigga's DL, I have messed with a few DL niggas, so honestly speaking, I feel like my answer will be biased. But um, honestly, sometimes you can't even tell. 
Nowadays, you don't know if the nigga is a DL or if he's out or he he's he's the top, he's the bottom. Nowadays, these people is all confusing. It's a whole mess. Like seriously, the DLs are not even DLs no more. They like DLs but want to get fucked. I don't understand where that logic comes comes from. <clears throat> like, how can you be a DL and get fucked? Like, I don't understand that. Like, growing up. So the person who asked me, they know what I'm talking about. So growing up, DLs meant like DL niggas would want to talk to a gay nigga for like the pleasure or like, you know, they're just, you know, being, they're just experimenting. So to answer that question, I don't know how can I determine if a nigga DL because the DL niggas I have came across, they're not the same now. Okay? Somebody asked me. Um, what do you do when a nigga piss you off real bad? Honestly, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I am very petty. Like, I know I'm trying to work on that. But I am very petty. Like, if, I, if my nigga really piss me off, I'm just a person that I will go missing. Like, on purpose. Like, D&D. &D, like, I will, like, ignore your shit. Like, for real. Like, you piss me off to the point where I'm ignoring you. Like, for real, for real. I'm gonna ignore that nigga. And that's not good, but, like, that's just that. But, yeah, nothing too major. Somebody asked me. I'm not even gonna, like... I could say it. We, we grown, right? Somebody asked me, do you spit or swallow? First of all, I'm not gonna answer that question to the camera. Because what I do behind closed doors is my business. But if this answers your question, I feel as if I do not judge to each their own. You know what I'm saying? But I feel as if depending on who you're messing with, then certain things will be an exception. Like you might be more comfortable with somebody. You might be not so comfortable with somebody. So depending on how comfortable you are with the person, then... You know, that should answer your question. Somebody asked me, how many how many chances are too many chances? Well, that's a good question. Um, I feel like depending on the person, depending on the situation, that's how you know what's too much. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you give somebody chances, it's good to give people chances. I believe in chances. I do. But I feel like the chances I believe in is like you have to give the person a chance and they learn from the mistake. You can't give somebody a chance and say they mess up, like, lying. But they keep lying. You keep giving them a chance and a chance and a chance. Like, at that point, it's not even a chance. It's more like, that's just who they are. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like, I believe in chances. And I feel like, what is technically too many chances? I don't have a real number. But I feel like you within yourself can answer that. And you will know, like, okay, this is too much. Like, if you're looking dumb or they're just doing stuff that they shouldn't be doing or lying to you or like cheating and stuff like that like at that point you gotta like separate yourself from that equation you know what I'm saying so there's no such thing as too many chances because I feel like you should know what's too many like you should know what you allow and what you're not gonna allow anymore so, yo this is like the third question I have seen here is the same question would you ever start OnlyFans the answer is no stop asking me that that's not happening I don't know who y'all take me as, or who do y'all think I am, but no, I am not starting that. So please stop asking me that. If you, honestly speaking, if if I'm not fucking with a nigga that do OnlyFans or Twitter, what makes y'all think I'm gonna start OnlyFans? Can y'all ask yourself that question for a second, please? I don't want to associate or affiliate myself with anything that has to do with promoting sex. So this is the last question I'm gonna answer. Um, the person asked me. What's the craziest high school story? And I mean, take it way back. Um, truth be told, I don't really have a crazy high school story. I feel like my high school year was like full of like drama. Like seriously, there was always a fight. There was always something. If you guys don't know, I graduated from New Design High School. It was in the Lancaster Street. It was like four schools in one. It was like Loma. Up at east side, I think. I don't know. I don't remember. But it was like four schools in one. It was a Chinese school upstairs. And our school was just too bombarded with mad people. There was always like drama going around. And like he said this and she said that. And like you did this with this person. You cheated on me for this person. It was just so mixy. I was always in detention, first of all. 
Because I had a smart ass mouth. I, I, my mouth was crazy. I was either in the dean's office or I was in detention, like after school detention. There was no real crazy story, but if you went to that school, then you know. There was always a fight. There was always something. But besides the bad stuff, that was a really good school. I met some great ass people and some great um teachers in that school that are like bomb.com. I don't think they go to that school no more. But I have met some genuine people in that school that I'm still friends with to this day. And if it wasn't for my high school, I wouldn't have been friends with them. So, besides the craziness, there was also some a positive side to it. You know what I'm saying? Alright, you guys. So, it's a wrap for this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel, make sure you click that subscribe button. And follow my social medias down below in the description bar. And I cannot wait to see you guys in the next video.